terminal alkynes can be deprotonated with a sufficiently strong base, such as sodamid or sodium hydride. The conjugate base of the alkyne can then be alkylated using an unhindered alkyl halide. This is a useful method for extending the length of a carbon chain. Only terminal alkynes can be used in this process because the alkyne must possess at least one acidic proton on an sp hybridized carbon. These terminal alkynes have pKa values of approximately 25. Both sodamide and sodium hydride have conjugate acids with pKa values of approximately 35. This makes them suitably strong bases to deprotonate a terminal alkyne completely. The conjugate base that is formed during this process is known as an alkanide ion. The alkanide ion is a strong nucleophile and so it can engage in an SN2 reaction with an unhindered alkyl halide. As the alkanide ion attacks the electrophilic carbon, the leaving group is concurrently displaced, and a new carbon-carbon bond is formed as a consequence. Since this is an SN2 reaction, it is important for the alkyl halide to be unhindered at the reactive center, and therefore methyl or primary alkyl halides are preferred. With substitution beyond that, namely secondary or tertiary alkyl halides, E2 becomes a problematic competing reaction. It's also worth noting that the leaving group could be a sulfonate, such as tosylate, mesylate, or triflate, as well as a halide. It's also important to stipulate, using numbers, that the two steps are, in fact, separate, distinct steps. Sodamid and the alkyl halide cannot be combined with the alkyne all at once because sodamid can cause the alkyl halide to undergo undesired substitution and elimination reactions. In this specific example, cyclohexylacetylene is deprotonated by sodamide to yield the corresponding alkanide ion. In a separate second step, the alkanide ion is treated with methyl bromide and attack of the alkanide ion on the electrophilic carbon displaces bromide to yield a new carbon-carbon bond. If acetylene is the reactant, two sequential alkylations could be performed if desired because acetylene possesses two alkyne protons. The first deprotonation generates the acetylide ion, which is the name for the specific alkanide ion made from acetylene. The acetylide ion can then be treated with an electrophile, such as ethyl chloride. The nucleophilic anionic carbon attacks the electrophilic carbon of ethyl chloride, displacing chloride in the process. The result is a new carbon-carbon bond between the alkyne and the ethyl group. Since the product of the preceding reaction namely 1-butyne, still possesses an alkyne proton, it can be deprotonated once again to form a new alkanide ion. This alkanide ion can be treated with an electrophile such as chloromethyl cyclopentane, upon which another SN2 reaction occurs to afford an internal alkyne as the ultimate product. Since the carbon-carbon bond forming step is an SN2 reaction,
It occurs with inversion of configuration at the reactive center. This is rarely evident, though, because the reaction is typically limited to methyl and primary alkyl halides, where that center will not be a stereocenter. Unless, however, isotopic substitution is used, in which case we can see stereochemistry at that site. The following SN2 reaction will highlight this point. In this instance, the alkyl bromide bears a deuterium atom, which is an isotope of hydrogen. From the perspective of chemical reactivity, deuterium behaves nearly identically to hydrogen. However, since it is an isotope of hydrogen, it counts as a separate group. Therefore, this reactive electrophilic carbon is a stereocenter. During the SN2 reaction, in which the acetylide ion attacks the electrophilic carbon and displaces bromide, that stereocenter is inverted. In summary, a terminal alkyne can be deprotonated using a strong base such as sodamide or sodium hydride. The alkanide ion thus formed is a potent nucleophile that can displace the leaving group from an unhindered alkyl halide in SN2 fashion to afford a new carbon-carbon bond. Although inversion does occur during this process, it is not usually evident since the alkyl halide substrate is typically methyl or primary. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.